Now, people, I don't know what is wrong with our Jamaican people, but it seems as if everywhere that they go, they bring their dirty attitude, dirty luggage. They don't realize that whenever you do stuff like this in a foreign country, you're going to be sent back home from whence you came. The moral of this video is from whence you came. I am speaking about a young man. His name is Jason Richards. He is originally from West Milan. Jason Richards got the opportunity to move to Canada, migrated about 10 years or so. Don't know what Jason Richards was doing in that 10 years, but something tells me he was doing all sorts of illicit, illegal activity. That illegal activity would sooner or later catch up to him. Based on the information, it is said that on or about the 24th of April 2024, Mr. Richards and a man was involved in a some sort of verbal altercation. Mr. Richards then pointed a tool at that person and squeezed the trigger at that person. That person lost their life. Mr. Richards, take for himself, ended up back in Jamaica from whence he came. But it seems as if Mr. Richards did not read the notice board. He never get the memo that there is a thing called karma. There is a thing that is called law enforcement. There is a thing that is called people in a foreign don't play with M-U-R-D-E-R-E-R-S. Whenever you commit such atrocities, you will be tracked down. You will be traced down, especially if you go back where you're from. You're pretty much hiding in plain view. He would learn the wrong way or the hard way when the Popo, along with the forces in other Canada, set up some sorts of sting operation, caught him right in where he is from. Now, people, I am not trying to train any sorts of criminal or future criminals. However, common sense would tell me that, you know, no, say, if me come from West Milan, I'm going to go America or I'm going to go to Canada. If me commit any sorts of act, more than likely, if me come back and I hide in my granny house, the people are going to find me. All of that flew over Mr. Richard's head because when the Popo went and looking for him, they found him exactly where they thought he would be. So the moral of the story is this. It is very hard to hide in plain view, especially when you commit M-U-R-D-E-R. -E these people are going to take it very serious. Most importantly, Whenever you get an opportunity, get some sorts of blessing and then you blow that blessing by blowing out somebody's B-R-A-I-N-S. There's a thing that is called karma. It is going to catch up to you sooner or later. Such is the case as it pertains to Jason Richards. So Jason Richards is going to leave from Jamaica, go to Canada, commit some sorts of act in Canada, Go back to Jamaica, then he's going to be extradited back to Canada. He is going to do his time and if he is not a citizen, he is going to end up back in a Jamaica from whence he came. Maybe about 2050, 2060, that is yet to be determined. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, it is called... These events are not as advertised, not a hundred percent. Maybe most persons are going to show up. However, you are going to be shortchanged after you pay the full fee. I am speaking about an event that took place in a Ocherius, maybe a couple of days ago, a couple of days event called Sashi. Now people, in the live performance where they had a whole bunch of the hot local artists, and then some international classic artists. One of those artists, Busta Rhymes, and the next lady, Keisha Cole. One of them a rap, one of them a R&B. So people, if you have one event and two of the main artists did not show up, international artists did not show up, you could consider it to be some sorts of scam. Now people... Buster Rhymes did not show up for that show because Buster Rhymes obviously did not get the deposit in which he expected. When it comes to show promoters in which I have promoted shows and know people that promote show in the past, you pay these act 
50% deposits just before them touch the stage a couple of hours you make sure that they receive their money through their agent through their road manager whomever before them touch the stage so when we saw that Buster Ryan made a post on social media telling his fans that listen this is a music business the business was not settled he was not disrespectful. He did not call out the promoters. Him just say the business was not settled. So therefore the business was settled. I am not coming. Did not hear from the agents or people that represent Keisha Cole. She was not there either. We also saw that the promoters of Sashi said that some sorts of unfortunate event, some sorts of unfortunate incident, and they are not responsible. There is something behind their control, people like me tell you. Whenever you're keeping any sorts of event, big event, and it comes to international artists, they go by the book, they go by the protocol. If you did not send these people their deposit, they are simply not going to show up. They are not going to come and reach by any sorts of promises, especially at their own expense. What is even worse? There's a DJ that came on stage and he was dissing Buster Rhymes, claiming that Buster Rhymes got his money, but he wants more money. Now, people, you and I know that this is some sort of propaganda, damage control that was done by the promoters of the show. Because, like I said, everything is done by contract. You negotiate a certain price. 50% and then the next 50% before you touch the stage. So therefore, there is no sorts of misunderstanding or asking for any sorts of more. So therefore, what the promoters and this DJ is saying, it is a collaboration of propaganda. It makes absolutely no sorts of sense. So people, in case you do not know, this is what a lot of these promoters do. They contact these big artists. They make them all sorts of promise. They then make these posters and post the people and picture and likeness span it and say that they are coming before them even send the people them any sorts of deposits. Meaning the first 50%. So therefore them now have some sorts of poster that looks attractive to the patrons. However, the patrons don't know that the money was not actually sent to these artists. So therefore these artists was not going to show up on any sorts of promises. A promise is a comfort to a fool. Luckily for Sashi, most of the local artists them show up and people you know so these local artists them ears here some sorts of big event so therefore them happy even though they might not have gotten their full amount or even the fifty percent deposit that they were promised. This is what happens and remember Sashi was around for a couple of decades. Sashi was around and then they disappeared for a couple of decades or so they are back. Here's the thing. This is what happens when people try to be promoter that are not promoter, that are not good business people, people that are trying to launder money from other people that are in illicit activity. So people like me say, at the end of the day, don't know if the sales were not looking good and then they decide that, listen, we now going to pay them top international artists because yes, people, these people like Keisha Cole and the Buster Rhymes, maybe Buster Rhymes not so expensive. However, for an artist, classic artist such as Keisha Cole, they have to pay out of the ASS. So therefore, them put the people and pitch up on the poster, them trick the people them, give them some sorts of puss in a bag. People pretty much got F-U-C-K. Whenever you don't get what you pay for, for it, totally it is some sorts of scam it is some sorts of sham regardless of what these persons are going to say it is easy it is contract if the contract is not signed and the contract is breached therefore these people now go show up them now go pull up so therefore pull up with the f-u-c-k-r-y these promoters are sham now the next thing that is popping in the news if you are a man or a woman that is involved in any sorts of A, B, U, S, I, V, E relationship, involved with any sorts of psycho in any sorts of capacity. So I am just giving you a hint. This is my disclaimer. This might be the time for you to pack your little dulcimina grip. 
exit stage left, run for your life because more than likely you are going to end up in a very bad predicament, meaning under the ground, six foot six or even badly hurts. I am speaking about a young lady, 30 year old Shanika Malcolm, P S Y C H O. She's in a relationship with a man. However, Shanika came home one day and she thought she had some sorts of inclination that this man was cheating. She decided, this is what I am going to do. I am going to buy a bottle of rum. I am going to get a lighter or some matches. And then I am going to commit some sorts of evil acts. Based on the information, it is said that the man was at his house at about 10 p.m. when Miss Malcolm entered the premises. The man thought that, well... Even though me and her are F-I-G-H-T, a little thing can go on, me might get some sort of S-E-X-U-A-L satisfaction. He did not know it was going to turn out the opposite polar way. Based on the information, it is said that this started from some sort of argument, some sort of push and shove. That was when Shanika pulled out some sort of bottle that she had, Throw it all over the man, them call it, douse him, and then she fling some sort of lighter, flamed on him, and people, you know, the results. Now, people, I can only assume the incident when something like this. She pull up with the bottle, with the rum. He thought that maybe she was going to get tipsy, and then he's going to tip, tip, tip her upon her toe. There are some sorts of backers. However, people, that would soon backfire. When she just threw it all over him and fling the matches upon him and burn him up. Based on the medical report, it is said that he was burnt up majority of his body. Them called the Popo, called the F-I-R-E, and this man was rushed to the hospital. This incident occurred in about April of 2024. She was remanded. She was officially charged maybe about a couple of days ago for grievous bodily harm to an individual. Now, people, based on what this lady is saying, this man was cheating. He was being unfaithful. So, therefore, she decided that she was going to take revenge. She was going to trick him and she was going to burn him up. This is my disclaimer. She decided that she was not going to go with any sorts of gasoline because he would have been suspicious. So therefore, she brought some sorts of jerry and navy rum in a some sorts of bottle. She probably made this man feel comfortable and then she shocked and awed him. I guess she was thinking, well, if he may go cheat, I'm going to make sure I'm going to burn him up so therefore he don't look any sorts of attractive to any other person that she deemed to be competition people these people are sick in them head so therefore don't be with anybody that is sick in them head unless of course you are sick in your head or you want to end up d-e-a-d point blank and period now the next thing that is popping in the news it seems as if these taxi men and bartender they are in the targeted group in a jamaica that is getting k-i-l-l-e-d left right and center Based on the Popo report, the latest victim, deceased 37-year-old Kian Bartley, known on the streets as Rimhead from Bunga Town, that is in Victoria District, that is in Linstead. People look dread in a Bunga Town, based on what the Popo are saying. Based on the information, it is said that they heard all sorts of loud explosions in the residents of that era. When they summoned the Popo, when they got there, Mr. Rimhead, he was laying on his back. Shirt B L O O D Y stiff stone call meaning that he was out D E A D on the spots. Now people, don't you realize bartenders and also these taxi men? It seems as if they are losing their lives at an alarming rate. Don't know if this is because of some sort of extortion because you and I know that this extortion is from Spanish town. Them leave, them gone, and them gone all over the place. Just a different day, same old ish. And they expect these taxi men to be still paying them even though they have shifted location, people. Me no know where Rimed do or I don't know the situation or the motive to why Rimed lose him life. However, in most cases, this is because of some sorts of extortion. And isn't it kind of weird that these extortionists, and I am not saying that that is the case in this case, just speaking in general terms. 
They are so steadfast in wanting money. They actually feel in their own demented mind as if you give them something for put on or them give you something for put on. So therefore when them come, them have them demands and if their demands is not met, they are going to make sure that you meet your maker. So when we hear of situations like this on a regular daily basis, we have to blame the system, the system of corruption. The system that allow these people, these extortionists, these dance. To act as if they have immunity. To act as if they are unstoppable, untouchable. Like them can just extort people and take away people at will. Without the system putting down their foot. However, what we've noticed. Now that it has gotten out of control. And it is an unstoppable avalanche of criminality and extortion. The poor poor them are hurry up to do some sorts of damage control. However, people, the damage has already been done. Point blank and period. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like these, please show your appreciation by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself.